Thanks, JR. Good to, good to see some faces on the screen. Uh, appreciate your time today. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to start with the important big rock I got to cross off. It's my wife's birthday today. So happy birthday to my wife. Uh, as you guys probably know, during the last eight or nine months, it's been very different and tough for everyone. So um, as a coach, your spouse, your partner, pretty important part of the equation. And uh, I'm just so blessed that She's such a rock star, so I love you, B. Um, second big rock, I think, is just the dealing with everyone who's dealing with the pandemic still and the frontline workers. And you know, every morning we go over to Assembly Hall and get our testing done. Uh, we brought them some coffee and donuts and stuff this morning. I just for all the frontline workers, healthcare professionals out there, I think it's the most important thing right now to say thank you for everything that you're doing. Uh, the work is unreal and. You guys are heroes, so we appreciate it. Um, obviously, the last six to eight months for everyone in the world, uh, 10 months has been unbelievable. But uh, in, in our little part of the spectrum in the world of athletics, you know, we had, we had the team come back in July. Um, maybe I'll rewind a little bit. So, you know, two years in, I uh, thought we've had some nice wins. You know, we beat Kentucky last year, won the SEC. We have beaten Michigan, swept Ohio State. We've done some good things in the first couple of years. But probably none uh, I'm more proud of than the recruiting that we've done and the class we brought in. Obviously, attendance. We were 15th in the country in attendance last year and starting to build some real momentum pre-pandemic. Um, so we're in a good spot. In a lot of ways, I feel like uh, we're right at the beginning now. Uh, we have eight freshmen on the roster. We're going to have four more in fall of 21. And because of the dynamics with COVID, we're going to have 12 freshmen on the roster, which is certainly unheard of uh, and very untraditional. But for me, it's really exciting. It's uh, not only the beginning of what I think will be uh, an Olympic quad of sorts, where uh, we have all those kids uh, learning lessons, gaining experience early. The thing about our sport that's so different than football or men's and women's basketball, you know, players don't leave early. So every lesson I can teach, um, all the reps that the young kids get will pay off in a few years. Um, obviously, I'm not naive. We lost about 85% of most of our offense, defense, and blocks uh, over the last couple of years, but that was certainly by design. Um, when I was hired, I was trying to uh, give the kids who were in the program a great experience and then start to put my footprint on it. And this will definitely be the first mini sampling of that going into uh, this kind of abridged spring season. So the plan for me is to get the young people as much experience as possible, be competitive in matches. Uh, we return some, some players that have some experience, but it's funny looking at players like Emily and Haley who have played four months of college volleyball and they're kind of upperclassmen in my mind and leaders. And uh, it's just a, it's just a wild, uh, wild roster. So, uh, in a lot of ways, just very, very grateful for the opportunity to be uh, getting ready to go. Uh, IU has been so impressive. Uh, the people behind the scenes, and I know a lot of people watching football and watching basketball, you know, wins and losses are what they are, but the, the hard work of so many people behind the scenes has been unbelievable. Um, and the pressure and the, uh, you know, it, it's just, to be a student athlete over the last eight to 10 months, uh, to be a young person to come to college for the first time, to not be able to see people, to, you know, many of our players had COVID and had to deal with uh, isolation and, and the loneliness of that and no connectivity. Um, it's been really, really hard on a lot of the young people. So they've been fantastic to get through it. Uh, I can't say enough about IU and the leadership here, uh, the people like Maddie White, Stephen Harper, and Becky Penny, and peop people that don't get enough, uh, you know, pub that deserve it for just teams to be able to play at all. So, um, you know, humbled yet excited, grateful. Um, I really feel good about where the program is right now, uh, but certainly not real comfortable with the state of affairs in the country. And we haven't even talked about the race relations and social justice. It's, it's been a handful. It's been the hardest coaching year of my life. Uh, and I've been in and around the big 10 for 20 years. Um, but in a lot of ways, the most satisfying because we got a great group of young people uh, that have learned a lot about how to live the right way and what truly matters. So with that, I think we can kick it off. Awesome. Uh, a reminder, if you have a question for Steve, uh, let me know by typing uh, in the chat that you have a question. We'll start with Dylan Wallace. 
Hey, Steve, thanks for your time. Um, you mentioned just kind of the, the players got – you guys kind of came back in July. Uh, you know, obviously it's, it's been a few months. I mean, how has it been – sort of kind of waiting around and just, you know, talk about the dedication of the players having to, you know, wake up and test and, and be responsible. Um, does it feel like, I guess, how, how were those months and how, what did you see from them that was so, I guess, inspiring? And then, you know, do you sort of feel like there's a, a sense of excitement that you guys, you know, in a week, you know, you're finally going to finally hit the, hit the court, you know? Yeah, I think the first question is a great one for the players, especially because they went through it. But they came back in July. They had, uh, you know, a very choppy couple weeks to try to get ready for preseason. We were in preseason for a couple days. And then it shut down, and the Big Ten said we're not going to play. Um, and then we're in a really fortunate position, Dylan, because, with, because we're so young, uh, any volleyball we got in the fall was just spent with foundational things and basics. You know, I know uh, it's, it's like teaching kids how to dribble and pass and shoot in basketball. It's the same thing. We had a lot of young kids who were talented, but we had to go back to the basics. So this whole thing, from a program standpoint, if you take out the honesty – or you take out the pandemic as just being tragic. Um, it's been great for our program to be able to have this much time with young people. Um, and yeah, I think they're super excited. They've been, they've been hoping and fingers crossed that we were able to play. And again, so many people working hard are getting us to the uh, kind of the start gate and we're, we're hoping everyone's healthy next week so we can go. Let's go Dustin, then Emily. I uh, kind of got two questions. How you doing, Steve? Good to okay. see you, man. Good to see you too. Good. Um, what, uh, so I want to just get a sense of, of what the logistics were like uh, for you guys once, um, you know, you, you mentioned coming in July, having it chopped up. I mean, what, what was, what kind of fall program were you allowed to have? Because obviously it's just different that you're usually a fall sport, you know, not playing until spring. I mean, just how much were you allowed to do? Um, and just you know, what was just the kind of logistics of, of the fall like for you, number one? Number two, uh, just with this huge freshman class coming in, I mean, how different of a, uh, a dynamic uh, do you expect to have? What do you expect this team to be able to do physically uh, that it might not have been able to do a year ago? Yeah, they, uh, so the first question, Choppy. So every single part of our operation here got touched by it in some capacity. So I've had close family members have it. Um, we've had players have it. We had staff have it. Uh, we had people who were touched by it. So we were, every single morning you wake up, Dustin, you're, you're Fingers crossed that no one's affected by it. And I think it's the same for most of the programs that are out there. Um, there's two different segments. There's a 20-hour segment and an eight-hour segment where you can kind of, um, because of different compliance rules and stuff, you can do it. We had a little bit of both. Um, and literally, it was kind of day by day. We tried to figure out who was healthy, how many players we'd have, and what we were allowed to do. And then we just stayed within those parameters and did that. Um, with regard to the second question, you know, as I alluded to earlier, you know, JR had sent me some stats about what we return. And we only have four players in the whole program who played more than 17 sets last year. Um, we had two players opt out. Um, Kari Zumak will be out for the year with shoulder. She had surgery. Um, you know, so if we have anyone else go down, you're talking about a third or more of the roster um, that's unavailable. So it's going to be really, really young. The thing about it, though, is they're young and good. So, you know, I, I expect us, if healthy, to be in every single match. I don't think, um, you know, I'm hopeful there's not a match we get manhandled in. But I also think we're going to be more competitive than people think. And um, Brianna Edwards returns, Haley returns, Emily returns. You know, we've named three captains for the year. Uh, Brooke, who was a transfer from Dayton, was an All-American as a junior. She's our only senior. Uh, incredible leadership, great kid. And so our ball controller setting is better. We've got a bunch of arms. Um, you know, Layla Blackwell and Savannah are two freshman middles, but Layla's 6'4 and change and comes from a great program. She's ready. And Savannah's really surprised us in camp. She's good. But we're going to start four or five freshmen. And, um, and I think that's great because wins and losses in the next four months, number one, let's just stay healthy, keep the kids healthy. Number two, if we go 0-22 or 22-0, and at the end of the day, for me, it's really the start of this kind of Olympic quad of getting things rolling. And I just want to learn. I want them to learn to play the right way and become good people and good teammates, and we'll go from there. Let's go, Emily, and then Steph. Hey, coach, how's it going? Good. What's up? Hey, um, I just kind of wanted to get a look into your goals for the year. It seems like a lot of um, teams are taking a different approach to it. Just because you know you're not guaranteed a certain number of games, you know they might be on the schedule, but you might not be able to play them. So, what are your guys' goals look like for this year? 
uh, to be determined. I think, I think we're, we're trying to find our identity. I think, you know, I've said this before, you've got, we've got a program that in 40 plus years has had one all American. Um, you know, we, we haven't been to the tournament as a program since 2010. Um, when I got here, they were coming off a one and 19 season. I, I mean, I think it's too early for us to have that. We don't have the benefit of banners and traditions and, um, stuff like that. And there's been some great teams and great players and great coaches in Indiana for sure. But the kind of things I want to accomplish, I think have to start small. Um, and I asked them that a couple of days of practice. I'm like, listen, you know, you get the gym, I'm staring at eight new faces and Brooks, a new face. And we have a lot of people that have moved on and just trying to figure out what we want to be and what makes sense. I think the things that matter to me the most, if you're talking about pillars is, you know, for me, are we good people? Um, do we give more than we get? You know, we've got a big uh, thing on our, our wall walking into the thing. We're entitled to nothing, grateful for everything, just the opportunity. I live that every day. I hope the players know that and people around me know that. Uh, learn how to play the right way and train the right way. I think that's really important. I mean, obviously, I've been to six Final Fours and won two titles. I know what good looks like. Um, we're just trying to start to recreate that in training every day, the right habits, um, being good teammates. And, uh, you know, we're just going to – it's – coaching cliche and you guys know me well enough to know that some of the stuff is it is what it is but we just got to try to get better every day one percent better every day let's go steph and then justin hey steve how's it going what's up um you know you've mentioned before you know you've always had a program where you know at least at indiana where the freshmen are able to come in early and start playing right away but you've said before that you know you kind of arrive once you have upperclassmen that can lead the way and you can, the freshmen can kind of ease their way in I mean, do you feel like this freshman class is kind of that, that core, the pillar where, you know, in a couple of years, you're going to be getting to where you want to be? Yeah, they have to be. And I think when it's the highest ranked class in program history and you got a bunch of kids who are highly decorated, it's, they knew what they were getting into. I mean, I told, I, I tell them all the time, I, I came here, I'm going to tell them the truth. We're going to work hard. I think we're going to have fun. And obviously we do have fun every day. It's, it's a great group to be around. The energy is awesome, but they at some point got to take on that responsibility. And, you know, we're heading into a, a Nebraska team that's returning most everyone. And, you know, I know they have a new staff, but it's staff returning and um, you know, their goals are different than our goals. Every program's got different, um, you know, back to Emily's question, which I think is fair. Every program's in a different state of development. I think in the history of our game, there's been like eight or nine teams to win the title. And of course, everyone wants to start the year thinking they're going to win a championship, but they're, they're you know, different people are at different spots. And um, I think these kids gathering experience, being in tough situations, they've had a boatload of adversity. I'm, I'm hoping we don't need so much more of that in life, but certainly in, on the court um, and, and learning what it feels like to not be in control of a match. All these kids were studs where they were, and they're going to come here and be like, Ooh, looks a little different. And experience is something you get after you needed it. And we're going to play a really good team out of the weekend. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. I, I love playing Nebraska. I always have. I have a ton of respect for them. But um, it'd be foolish to think we're not going to come out trying to throw some haymakers. So that just is what it is. Justin and then Amanda. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Good, man. Um, in your mind, what are some of the advantages and challenges of playing just a Big Ten schedule this year? Advantages are, uh, I think, health and safety, number one. And keeping it within the Big Ten bubble, the institutions have been great about their protocols, and I feel good about that. Uh, the disadvantages, obviously, is in the preseason, you get to learn a lot about your team over 10 to 12 matches, and you get to play some matches that might be a little bit more manageable. Um, not that if you play poorly, you know, a lot of teams in the country will whoop you. But for me there's nowhere to hide in the big 10 uh you know people can say all they want you know we were we were pretty much pretty close to last in the big 10 last year we beat the sec champion so i didn't think we were a bad team i thought on any given night we could beat people i think we lost six or seven matches by two points uh it's what it was but i think the conference it's funny when i hear basketball you know basketball's talking about how tough the conference is and all the teams at the top of the that's been 30 years in the big 10 it's every single night you're playing number four somewhere and then number five the next night within four, you know, we play two top 10 teams typically back to back in two different cities on a Friday and Saturday. And Emily will tell you, cause she lived it. Like if IU was to play Duke on a Friday night and then North Carolina on a Saturday night, people would throw up their arms and say, Oh, it's made, it's impossible. And how do they prepare? And we've been doing that for 
a heck of a long time. So I just think it's a testament to the players that play women's volleyball in the Big Ten. They're tough as hell. They play hard. The coaching is you can't out-coach people. You can kind of match it, hopefully, if you're lucky, but you can't out-coach people. And, and I feel like I do a pretty good job. I love my staff. But, you know, Hugh's got gold medals, and my mentor at Penn State's got – X number of rings and Cook's got X number of rings and there's just nowhere to hide. And that's, what's amazing about it. Like, I don't, we're going to work as hard as we do. I want to, I want to take swings at the best. Amanda and then Kevin. Hi coach. What up? Um, so I have kind of a two part question. The first part, um, how have you and the team been preparing for your, the start of the season specifically against Nebraska with them being such like a top ranked team consistently? And then the second part is, do you think there's going to be a strong impact on the players with the lack of fans allowed to attend the games? First of all, the media, when did this two-part, three-part question thing get hip? You guys are like, you know, I'm good. I like to talk, so I'm into it. But, like, I'll do it. Um, first one, Nebraska's Nebraska. They're going to be a, t- a top-five team. They, they've got real shot to win the title. Uh, they're going to come here and play great. I, I just – that's that. And, um I just know I just know how prepared they're going to be. They're as good as it gets. Uh, the second part of it, uh, I'm not so worried about our energy. I think we've got some players on the team. You know, one of my favorite lines from from Russ at Penn State is, you know, you want to recruit kids with character, but you also want characters. You know, if I'm going to hang out with you every single day, I need a few kids who are just slightly off, and I got a few who are just slightly off, and they're fun and they fly around, and so it won't take long for them to get in the mix. And I think that's important. You, you, need, you need to have fun, man. If you're not having fun with what you're doing, you're in the wrong line of work. So we got some kids now that make my day better, for sure. Okay, Kevin Brockway. Steve, you've been watching a lot of Zooms with those uh, two-point questions, right? Unbelievable, <laughs> yep. Um, the last time we talked in uh, August, I, I mean, football wasn't even playing, and now you've obviously got football, men's basketball. But what do you think it means for the athletes and for the campus just to have these non-revenue sports uh, kind of going here the second semester? Well, I think it's great. I mean, I, you know, it's, I think it's hard on players, way harder than people think. I think it's hard on staffs, way harder than people think. But in the end of it, we're in the entertainment business. I mean, women's volleyball in the Big Ten is behind football and men's basketball, and that's it when it comes to Big Ten Network stuff. And, you know, we play in front of thousands of people a night, and we're, we're – there's a lot of people out there that are really excited to watch the game. So, um, you know, I think I was, I'm a huge hockey fan, as you guys know, and they're talking about they're going to lose a boatload of money to play this season. But there's something to be said about being able to turn on the TV and watch a sport. And um, although we can't kind of congregate and be around each other and be at pubs and bars and at live games, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing to be able to be entertained. And I think uh, – that's something that we've crossed over into, especially with how high profile this sport is in this conference and how great this conference is. There's going to be a lot of eyeballs on, on streams and TV and various platforms. And I think that's important for people, especially young people um, that are loving the game and learning the game. It's the fastest growing high school sport in the country. More, more females play women's volleyball than any other team sport in the country. Uh, the club scene is unbelievable and robust. So there's a lot of people who are interested in it, and um, we want to be able to to entertain. Zach? Hey, Steve. Um, sorry, I'm late, and somebody may have asked something about this already. I apologize. But um, I know that coaches always kind of balance the short and long term in terms of sort of thinking about what's next, but also maybe looking down the road in terms of recruiting development, things like that. The, the long term, I imagine, probably kind of gets flipped on its head for you a little bit here when it's not the sort of fall season, spring to work on things, summer to get better, fall season. What's different, I guess, about the way you approach managing your roster, especially managing maybe some of your younger players when you're going to play a spring season? And then obviously you're going to kind of have that summer probably to recover and get strong again. And then, you know, good Lord willing, obviously, everything is fairly back to normal by fall and you're basically playing two seasons in one year. Yeah, and, and you nailed it. It's, it's unique because we'll have two seasons in one year with that summer gap to kind of reboot. Again, we, I'm not losing players to the NBA draft. I'm not losing players to the NFL. We're going to have eight freshmen in the spring season, add four more. I'll have 12 freshmen on the roster in fall of 21. And we're at the beginning of a four-year run, which I think um, we'll have really good talent. We've retained staff. They're doing a great job. I think everyone's got good energy. And so, you know, 
I'm not one to not be transparent. You guys know me pretty well. It's this four month thing is just bonus volleyball for me. It's getting people opportunities. We only have one senior and she'll be back in 21. We, we have the opportunity to, to put the whole thing in a lab for a year and see what we can do. And then understand we've got a, the majority of the roster has another two, three years together where we can really start to, to get to where I need it to be. Um, but not a lot of pressure on us in the next few months. I, we're going to be grateful if we play a match, we're going to be grateful. Uh, we've got 22 on the schedule. I'd, I'd imagine there'll be hiccups as we go, but anytime they can put on the uniform and play and feel what it's like and have to compete against the nation's best, it's another step forward for us. We put it in the piggy bank uh, and then reboot in the summer, bring in some new kids and get after it again. Okay, we're going to go back to Emily. Hey, Coach, um, just really quick, a kind of big topic uh, conversation for, you know, the last few months, if not year, has kind of been the mental health of student athletes. So what is your what is your team doing kind of specifically to address the mental health of your athletes? Uh, it's a great question and very relevant. And I would even go further, Emily. I'd talk about staff and support staff and everyone in the ecosystem. I think it's important that everyone communicate. I think it's something we openly talk about as a team. Uh, IU has tremendous resources for athletes if they need if they need assistance. Um, you know, I know everyone. It's cliche to say the team is a family, but they know that. You know, I've got players that talk to my wife, and they go to lunch with Krista, and we 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 have a we have a pretty tight knit group. Um, you know, I think it's something that people need to talk about. I also think that you know, I I got this from the world of business when I was kind of out of volleyball for a bit. It's if you can't take a day off and things keep rolling, you got a bad company. So if a kid's in a bad spot, I tell them, hey, take the day, go to the library, go get a coffee, go watch Netflix for a few hours, get you, you know, just refresh yourself and come back when you're ready to roll. It's uh, nothing's more important than taking care of each other right now. And, um, you know, Lord knows it's been hard on everyone. It's been a crazy hard month, uh, eight to 10 months for me. I mean, we're homeschooling five kids in my house. My wife is homeschooling our three kids and, and our, my brother-in-law has two children. She had broken her leg in September. Um, you know, we've had family members get COVID. We've had every imaginable thing go wrong as have most people in the country. And you just try to get up the next day with a smile and remember that you've got a roof and you've got, you got some food and most of us have the internet, thankfully. And, you know, it's, you stay grateful about the stuff that you should stay grateful about. And I think we, we keep pumping, Emily, we talk to our kids about that all the time is if you spend all your time really being grateful and thinking about the things you have, it's tough to be in a bad mood and feel, woe is me. It's we these kids are getting a world-class education. They got a ton of people around them that love them. They've got food. They get the opportunity to work out. They've got teammates. I mean, we have very, very little to be, uh, uh, to be concerned about. And if there are concerns, we address them, give a kid a hug, tell them to take the day. I think that's important for every coach to understand right now. Okay. We're going to finish with Griffin. Hey, Steve, it's good to talk to you again. Uh, last season, Breonna Edwards was very much the focal point of your guys' offense. Know you're bringing in some freshmen with firepower. Is there going to be more of an emphasis, I guess, this year to, to spread the wealth around a little bit more offensively? For sure, for sure. And then uh, so much of that is going to come down to can we handle the ball. But we've, got, we've made really good strides with that. We've got some young kids who can play. Um, and Brianna's phenomenal. If she's healthy. She's going to be one of the better players in the conference, I think. And, uh, and then the young kids, she sets a good example for the young kids. The addition of Brooke has really helped us because Brooke is a, a phenomenal setter um, and certainly helping with Emily. And, and uh, regardless of what system we play, we've got, we've got pretty good setting now. Um, but, you know, Bree's going to want the ball a bunch because she's grown up a bunch. And uh, it's amazing to see how far she came in the last few years. Uh, but there'll be a few kids that uh, you know, no one really knows who we are right now, uh, except maybe me. And I think we're a lot better sometimes than some of these kids think they are. I think once they get some confidence and some, some matches under their belt and some experience, uh, this thing is going to take off. And uh, that's the fun part. It's, it's not easy to rebuild programs. I mean, th this is my third tour of duty. I did it at Auburn Young. I did it at Maryland before this. And, um, but I'm as excited as I've ever been. Uh, with the people we have in the gym. And, uh, you know, I know what we're getting into. I'm not naive, but I feel, I feel great about the people we have. And if you got good people, it's anything. It's a business. It's a hotel, a restaurant. If you got good people, you got a shot. So 